Conversations with Hispanic Lifestyles, Latinas of Influence is presented by Wells Fargo Bank. With roughly 60 million Latinos in the U.S., we highlight Latinas of Influence, businesses surviving to thrive. We talk culture, travel, health, wellness, music, entertainment, and of course, food. Our passion is to share inspiring stories with the community. I'm Richard Sandoval, and this is Hispanic Lifestyle. Are you going to say action or should I say action? Which is, which, what should I, uh, who should I, I defer action to? action and you say cut when the interview is over because I won't know. Oh, okay. I like it. I like it. Action. Gabriella. <laughs> okay, let's do that again. I, I stepped on you. Action. Gabriella, I want to thank you so much for participating in our Latina Conference 2021 um, congratulations on all your success as a director, as a writer. But before we get into all of this, I, I'd like you to talk a little bit about how your year has gone coping with COVID-19 and all these restrictions. Um, pretty good because I believe that happiness comes from inside and is how you take it. And I went through different phases. I went through, I'm not going to lie to you. I started with impatience. How long is this going to last right at the year ago? And then I said, if I had all this time, I'm going to write a screenplay. So I wrote a feature screenplay for about four months. Uh, and when I finished, um, I got offered to direct a, a five episodes of a TV show. Um, and so I divided the year into starting with uncertainty to take advantage of this free time to create something and waited until a job was offered to me. And, and then the second part of the year, I was in Sonoma County directing this uh, TV show, Casa Grande. Well, I'd like you to share with us uh, a couple of your projects. I know that you've had, you've worked with some big talent by the way, so mention them and tell us a little bit about some of the films that you have directed over the last few years. Okay, great. Um, I directed seven feature films. Um, the last one is for, it's an original movie for Netflix for Spain. So all famous, very famous Spanish actors um, that you might have known, Blanca Suarez, uh, Marisa Paredes, Belen Cuesta, Rosy de Palma, Max Iglesias, Macarena Garcia, and Amaya Salamanca, Carlos Bardem. Um, it was a fantastic experience. And the film, it was programmed for Spanish in Spain, but it was released in 190 countries, including here and 18 languages. So it's called Despite Everything. Well, I want to talk a little bit about you getting in the career of directing. And, and this just goes to show you my knowledge. Does somebody mentor you? How do you become a director on a major project? Do you have to be the assistant director and work your way up? Or you just write your own script and, and, and you took the opportunity to direct your own projects? I think there's many ways to become a director. That some of them, I've actually went to school for film directing uh, in Argentina, and then I came to the United States to do my master's degree at AFI. Uh, so I actually believe in learning and also what a school permits you to actually practice and do short films. But it's really, I believe, it's really about doing. It's a very, you know, like writers need to write and directors need to direct. And now it's so easy. I encourage new people to, like, you can record something with your cell phone and edit it in your computer. And then you have a short film. And if you put it online, you have distribution. So I, I believe that more people can become a film director now if they try. I went the, the, the school route, but it's not necessarily the only route. I also want to talk a little bit about 
the development of your projects, the writing, the creative process. Can you take me through that and talk a little bit about going from just a concept to writing to directing? Yeah, um, ideas could come when you're walking or driving or taking a shower. And, and then what makes a difference is if you actually sit down and develop them. And some people might have like some days you have writer's block. So what I do is I try to write something different or I go for a walk and or, or just, oh, I just sit there until ideas come. Um, I really am a big believer. I wake up every day at 6, 7 a.m. in the morning and I write. That's my best time to write because the brain is a little sleepy. So I have less negative, you know, thoughts and I get everything done. My friends know this and about middle of the day, um, I have more meetings kind of after 11 a.m. on, um, you know, because I, I, and some writers write at night, but it's the same concept. I feel like, for writing, you have to be a little bit quiet and in silence, even if you are writing with a writing partner. Um, so that's my process. I write in the morning, some other people write at night. And sometimes I direct movies that I didn't write. So I come from uh, an objective point of view, but I, you know, I'm very good, for example, editing scripts that I wrote because I edited seven movies. So I know what is too much or repetitive. Um, so I enjoy that process too, when it's not my script, but I can just give the writer some notes. I'd like to use the term level playing field. And quite honestly, I, I have a little different perspective. You know, if the project is good, then people will watch it. Regardless if there is a male or a female or a Latino or an African-American or Asian person, if it's a good story, people will watch it. Now, access is a whole different story you yeah. know, to be able. So will you talk a little bit about being a woman, a Latina director versus, you know, I don't believe, I know it's dominated by males, to be honest with you, a lot of industries are, but talk about that and the level playing field and access. Yeah, well, I've, um, a couple of years ago, I won an award that is uh, Women in Film and Sundance Institute give it to 10 projects written and directed by women. Um, and they taught us in that class that it's the same percentage of women and men that go to film school, 50-50. So they were analyzing why there are not more women director. And I think it starts with or oh, they say, because they study the statistics, they start having more female executives that want to do female-led or female behind the camera projects. So I think that's changing. I really need to see a change. And especially because I see women's movies making money. So at the end of the day, it's also a business. Um, and so that, I thought that was very interesting. And I think that part of my success is because I've always made commercial movies, movies that I feel are universal, that people want to watch. And you're right, they still have to be good and they have to have a heart. And I think that's the key of a successful movie is something that creates emotions in other human beings. So other human beings want to watch them, right? And I, I feel like that's the key. And sometimes, you know, women are not taught to ask for money or do commercial things. And I think we have to re-educate ourselves because I believe it's not a bad thing to want to make money as long as you have a good message. Which also brings up, we are at our Latina conference talking about Latinas and talk about the fact that even just recently, uh, with the Oscars announcing, I know off camera, you pointed out that there was a few more Latinos that were nominated in the sound categories, but let's face facts for the most part, Latinos, Latinas were overlooked during uh, the announcement of the Oscar nominees. What are your thoughts about that? What are your thoughts about Latinos, Latinas in entertainment, specifically movies and television? 
Yeah, this year there were not enough uh, Latino people nominated. Um, I also think it has to do same as I told you the story about the executives. There's not enough Latinos in the academy voting. And so that's a problem. Me, I, I tried to get in the academy. So to, in order to get in, because the academy told me, why don't you apply? In order to get in, I need letters from two Latino directors. And so to me, two directors in my category. So I'm not friends with directors because I'm a director. So I'm a friend with a lot of producers, a lot of editors. And so this system, they don't have enough Latinos voting. And therefore, of course, there's not, not enough Latinos who get nominated. So the system has to change from the inside out. Um, so I hope it changed. I have faith. Uh, and as long as we don't have more Latinos in the academy, um, they, it's difficult that people nominate them. I was lucky to be invited by the academy to speak in a Latina panel at the, actually at the Academy Theater on Wilshire. Um, and it was great. It was like two Latina directors, three Latina actresses, two Latina producers. It was a full panel of Latina women, you know? And, um, and then when I came out, I said, oh, this is great, but how about you make me a member of the Academy? <laughs> great to invite me to speak in a panel. And they were like, well, you need this, this, or that. So I'm a, you know, I, I, I have hopes that one day I'll be a member and I have hope one day to win in an Academy Award because as a little girl, I used to watch the show and see myself winning an Oscar. And I have here actually like the, the Hollywood uh, Boulevard kind of, you know, Oscar in my office, which is made of plastic. <laughs> And my teacher, when I was at AFI, he had won an Oscar for a short film. So I actually held two Oscars in my life, one for my teacher and the other from uh, Paolo Sorrentino, who won a Best Foreign Film. And I was, I was at a party with him and I said, can I take a photo with you, Oscar? So Veronica, I can send you this photo. Um, they're very heavy. And I still dream as I was a little girl of winning one someday. But also I know that it is about the work. It's not about the awards. The award is just a validation that is nice to have, but it's really about the work and who you can reach. Well, it's funny. I was going to ask you how important is it for you personally and professionally to be recognized by the Academy but it, I have to believe it's a balance between how many people see your films, your product, your creative work, and the recognition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, to me, I, I love the recognition and I have won and been nominated to a few times for Best Director and it was an honor, but it's as much as an honor to know that two of my films were number one in the box office in Mexico which means millions of people saw that movie or the Netflix movie reach out so many people in 190 countries. So that to me, when I receive little messages or positive messages on Instagram or Twitter or, you know, or people that are strangers completely tell me how much they love it and what producing them, that is um, such an, uh, a happy feeling because you as an artist are trying to reach a message to someone and communicate to someone. And then all of a sudden there's a stranger who's telling you, I receive your message. And that's a beautiful feeling. Well, I've only got a few more minutes left with you. So I want to give you an opportunity to give us the last word, if you will, your thoughts, maybe it's advice. Of course, don't forget to plug your your upcoming projects. How do we follow you? You have a social media account. So I gave you a lot there, but you have the final word. I I feel like I'm here because I want to share my experience with others. And for anybody who's planning to be a writer or director, my advice is just do it. Just do it. 
do it every day whatever is your passion follow it because we only have one life and we better make something out of it um so that's my last words didn't get enough there's always more at hispaniclifestyle.com and follow us on your favorite social media platforms